Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you from Waikiki Beach today. I'm looking outside my window. Uh, after this, I'm hoping to get some breakfast with my son, Jeremiah, down at uh, Cheeseburger in Paradise, and then maybe paddle out. It looks like we might have some stormy, a little bit of storm conditions here, so I gotta get out early as, as quickly as I can. But we're, uh, I, I just got back from uh, trips to the, the, the cold, frozen north, and uh, I have a deal when I go out there to speak to, to uh, Catholic men's conferences that I'm not allowed to be outside any more than 90 seconds. And I was just in Worcester, Worst, Worcester, Massachusetts, and they blew it. I was outside for, I think, over a minute and 25 seconds. Uh, so, no, I mean, uh, two minutes and 25 seconds. So it was just brutal. But I braved the cold tundra, and I'm back in Hawaii. We'll be right back with our guest, B.J. McKay. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wasnick Adventure. We're here in Waikiki Beach, and I'm pondering today uh, this time of new beginnings. Today is just coming up on spring, or spring has just begun. And I remember when I went to Baylor University, that's kind of like, uh, they called it Berkeley on the Brasses, but it's more like Notre Dame for Baptists uh, there in the middle of Texas, in Waco, Texas. And I remember as I was going to, uh, to class one day, I'm walking along uh, towards my class, and I see... Every morning, I would see this branch, this big kind of branch had fallen, and through the winter, the dead leaves just stayed on it. I mean, it fell, it fell in September, and then through the winter, the, the, the leaves never fell off. And I said, why do the leaves fall off a living tree, but they don't fall off a dead tree? And finally, you know what I did? I went to the biology department, <laughs> and I asked him, and he's like, duh, you know, the new, the bud, the new life pushes off that dead leaf, and that's why dead leaves fall off of living trees, but they don't fall off of dead trees. And I think it's just a lesson in life. Uh, Jesus said, behold, I've come to, uh, I may, I'll make all things new. You know, I've come to give you life and have it to the fullest. Uh, he gives us that new life that wants to spring forth like, uh, I think it is in the prom, uh, prophecy of Joel, like living waters bursting forth from our heart. The new life of the Holy Spirit wants to push off that old regime, that old stale mindset, that, that, that thing, those things that you cling to, like a dead leaf clinging to a dead tree, and, and, and bring new life to you and, and bring you the flower, re renew the flower of your youth. And you know, once the, where, when the bud comes out, then the flower comes out, then guess what? The fruit comes. So today I have a guest with us that I think will kind of shake things up a little bit. Kind of time for us to take a fresh look at, at a, a new perspective on our lives and, and look at where, is the, where are the dead leaves and what is the new life in Christ uh, that he wants to, uh, God wants to come forth in our lives. So I met B.J. McKay at an event, a men's conference in, in, in Indiana about a month ago. And I go, I got to get this guy on my radio show. So B.J. McKay, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Is it? It is. So, I'm so just getting over a sinus infection, cold. So you have to kind of bear. Well, with good me. for you. I'm voice glad. Comes and goes a little bit, but I'm on the mend. So. Uh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're coming back from. Where yep. are you in Indiana? I live in the uh, sprawling metropolis of Muncie, Indiana. I've heard of that. Yeah, I've heard of that. Um, Home of Ball State University. Uh, David uh, Letterman was one of our fa our uh, famous grads. Oh, awesome. And so and so you so I see from your your bio um you do a lot of scuba diving there in Muncie, Indiana. Yeah, they didn't know that Muncie was a big scuba diving desk. I'm I'm, I'm disappointed there. You didn't yeah, know I got this a, was a real destination. I, I, I didn't know. I, you break open the ice and then you and then you uh so so yeah, you I know I know BJ, you're one of the hardest people I can I can imagine to interview because you there's so many things going on in your life. BJ is uh, I would say De developing people in, in personal leadership I'm, and that what, what I think it means is personally first of all just taking leadership in your own life and then inspiring others I think to greatness too I know you have a fitness uh, gym that you own and and you're you're a fitness trainer but I know you also go out and you work with groups and you businesses and individuals 
to help kind of uh, really determine what what uh, what their talos is, as, I, as we would say in philosophy, what their personal purpose is, and shake things up and help them uh, get started uh, in progress on their goals. And so uh, and so, I don't even know where to begin, but. Tell tell us a little bit about your let's uh, let's go into scuba diving. Tell me about your have you ever yeah. have you ever dove with sharks? Uh, I have I have I um, I came by scuba diving by way I was thrust into a role um, in cable advertising sales, and it was like hey go find new markets. And I had a degree in telecommunications and public relations, so I, I didn't have any idea what I was doing. At least I was honest about that. And uh, we found ways to kind of expand the brand. And I found that there was a scuba diving television show on the New England Sports Network um, called Divers Down TV. I'm sure if it's still around, but um, I'm like, hey, this looks like a group that we could talk to and we might be able to do some work with. So to do product placement, we needed actual consistent people to be there besides just the person behind the camera. So I'm like, well, I'll just learn how to scuba dive. So I went in, learned how to scuba dive here in Muncie, Indiana, and rock quarries and all these other places. Are you serious? Really? Yeah. That's how in I came rock my way. Up. Okay. Yeah, in rock quarries. Yeah, Tom Leard um, is uh, kind of a scuba diving like legend, and he's uh, based out of here in Muncie. Does a great job. Uh, trained me through that program, and there I was off the coast of Florida diving in Lake Winnipesaukee diving, um, like old ancient glaciers and um, oh all my these foreign gosh, glaciers. really? Cool. All I'm just kind of still figuring out how to do all these things. So that was like my uh, thrust into scuba diving, and one of the groups we went with, we were diving with some nurse sharks. And things of that nature. Nothing too hairy or intimidating. Yeah, nurse nur- uh, sharks. I'm sorry. They're they're they'll take a chunk out of you. You know, no doubt about it. Yeah, I just think always uh, uh, a theme that you'll find with me is my confidence far outpaces my competence. Well, that's good though. I mean, it, it's yeah. you know what? I think it's good to get in things over your head because then you got to stretch and like, dude, when you're down when you're scuba diving and suddenly there are sharks it does stretch your it does make you kind of uh have to stretch your 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 courage your capacity your fortitude and all that i know uh i got to dive with some sharks in uh tahiti and uh you know the thing that was scary to me maybe you agree with this it wasn't the sharks it was those weird ugly demonic looking eels that would come out yeah, of the more caves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah those things those things would freak me out and so yeah, I think, I think one, one of the things that like really hit me was that, I mean, when does it impact, impact my confidence? I wasn't in my world anymore. Yeah. I was in something else's world. Yeah. And I was just a little baby. And I didn't, like, they can get around all they want to. They've been here the whole time. Yeah. I mean, millennia. And I'm just new here. And it's just, it's a real feeling yeah. being exposed. Yeah. You know, but, you know, it's good to put yourself in, you know, in into the danger zone in a, in a reasonable way. You know, whether it's I'm going to go surfing, I've never surfed before, I don't know what the waves are going to do to me, or you're starting to ski. There's something about uh, about that that causes you to, it kind of humbles you, and it crackles and fractures a lot of the resistance that you have. And so that once you do that, you can feel like you go down for an hour or 45 minutes with a scuba tank 100 feet deep, you're flying in a three-dimensional space. It's really like what birds do, you know? And, right. and then suddenly you surface and you go, I can do anything. If I can do that, I, I, can, I can do anything. I, I remember once I was, when I first learned to scuba dive, I was here in Hawaii, and the guy that taught me, his name is Diver Guy. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a per- perfect name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, who's your Diver Guy? Well, it's Diver Guy. Diver well, he, guy. He, he, yeah. he lives in Vietnam now. He teaches in Vietnam. But I remember the morning he picked me up to go, to go. I did my lessons and went, you know, two or three lessons, and then we went deep and uh, on the same day. And he didn't look too good. He looked like he had got a, well he had actually gotten a fight with his new boyfriend of his ex-girlfriend and and he had a little bit too much Whoa. to drink which is not not a good thing to do you know when you go dive but a- after going through our the, the the sequence he says okay let's go deep because he, he knew me knew i was a waterman and went off the wall here by hanama bay it, it just goes down 200 feet and we went down 100 feet and i was having a good time bj i was uh I'll get a workout in here. So I'm swimming and get, you know, I'll get a cardio, not realizing, oh, that sucks up oxygen, right? Mm. So, yep. so down at 100 feet, I've only, I've only uh, learned to clear my mask that morning, right? Uh, with, with, you know, when water gets in your mask and he, and, he, and he checks out my, he comes and checks out my gauge and he goes, oh, he looks at me like, you know, calm, you know take it easy, you know? And uh, and so then, luckily, it was just him and I that were. There were other groups, but it was he and I that were just uh, scooping together. Then he comes back a few minutes later, and he looks and he goes, uh, 
we need to exchange uh, tanks because he knew how to moderate his his. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and so <clears throat> we we traded tanks. He gave me his kind of tattered, you know, vest or whatever it was with the tank, and uh, I remember the smell of alcohol. <laughs> oh gosh! You know what you're not supposed to do when you go down. And we and we and we and we we changed tanks and then we were able to surface. And I just call it, you know, think about it. That's what Jesus did for us. You know, when he came down to earth, he uh it's scuba tank theology. You know, he he said he 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 breathed my my breath I give you, my my peace I give you, my spirit I leave with you, and he breathed his breath of life into the people. Mm. And that's what Jesus did for us, except for there's no alcohol on it, you know. <laughs> but but he give he gives us that new life. I've kind of talked a little bit too much this segment uh, i'm gonna get in trouble for that but when we come back bj I'm gonna, i'll let you run We're talking to bj mckay he's a personal leadership uh de- personal leadership development and a fitness trainer too we'll be right back with the bear wozniak adventure now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime growing in manly virtue through bears man cave community in our three-year school of manliness Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at Deep Adventure. Dot com. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24 hour support. Right. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to Notre Dame fcu.com mahalo to notre dame federal credit union for making the bear wozniak adventure possible you can gain traction in the virtues in my book deep adventure the way of heroic virtue and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book a surfing guide to the soul both newly published by sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com, and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite all the men out there to go to deepadventure.com and join the man cave, join the School of Manliness. It's a three-year curriculum that you go through that has video, audio, written content, self-assessments, and uh, you go through it not alone. You go through it with a, a company of men. There, If you join on year two, month three, then you just, that's where you, where you start your journey through the three-year curriculum, but you do it with other men. Once a week, once a month, we have a Zoom video call where we all get together. And the, what I'm really, really focused on is that if you're, if you have a son between the age of like say 12 and 21, you can get his, his login also. You can give him a login and you can lead him through the three-year school of manliness. I can't imagine anything more important for the world today than for young men to know what it means to be a man. And speaking of manliness, we got with us BJ McKay, uh, personal leadership uh, developer and uh, weight trainer. So you know what, BJ, it, it seems to me that when men join our man cave, one of the first things they do is they, they, they we talk, all of them start with fitness, physical fitness. You know, they're, they're developing along in their spiritual life, their career life and, and other areas. But f- uh, being personally fit with the eating regimen and and the, and the resistance training and the cardio workout, et cetera, it's something that you can really, if you work there, it's almost like you can develop virtue from the outside in. 
I 100% agree with that. I mean, in my practice, be it at the gym or be it um, coaching leaders um, throughout the world, it's uh, super approachable. And it's a great way to micro dose suffering into people that have literally leaned into, if you got the pleasure and pain principle, they've leaned too much into pleasure because that's where our body naturally wants to float. Um, they don't want to ride the rapids. They don't want to hit those waves there um, where you have to kind of use and burn calories. So when you give somebody, even somebody that's just, um, like morbidly obese, a little extra walk, a little um, extra of something, nothing too extreme from like a, a extreme standpoint, you start to get them to understand um, what change really is, like what it takes to learn something new, to be creative and to grow. It's not comfortable because it will affect your confidence. It'll affect um, your motivation. It'll, you'll seem like, I don't even know how to do this. I seem like a fish. Like, so when you approach it with physical fitness, it's a common enough theme around the world that like, hey, you do this, you run, you swim, you do whatever you do for fitness. You can put that out there for people and it's not too esoteric where they're like, well, how do I grow mentally my emotional intelligence? Hey, how about we just go for a nice hard run? How about we put you under some load for a little while and see how that feels? And it can start opening new pathways and give them a new language to talk about how they're growing and how they're experiencing that type of growth. I, you know, it's so cool. It's true because it's like the, uh, you're, you're, it's almost like your synapses need to get reconnected to the fact that I'm going to go into an area of resistance. But I've never heard that term before, microdose. Like you, you start with, I, like I, I know I, I, when I was training for my, my first degree black belt, I was like, okay, I'm in pretty, I'm in good shape, but I'm not in black belt shape. And I know my, my sensei just said, look, you do this run, and then every day, you go one telephone pole further. Mm. You know, it wasn't like a huge, and, and you know, for a lot of people, maybe walking to the end of the block, a lot of men that come to us in the man cave, just walking to the end of the block is a big deal. You know, tell them you walk to the end of the block and you go one driveway further every day. And you know what happens after 30 days? You know, you go in a mile. And so, mm -hmm. so, so, the, so now, but how does that crack, om, crack open your psyche? You've developed these, these paths of I can do, I can do, all I can do take these small steps that I can see look at the progress and so then it, it doesn't that translate into the other areas of their lives oh yeah I mean how, how do you teach somebody um, accountability and self-discipline when they don't even have the word in their dictionary you can use a tool like uh, fitness and pushing people where they start to understand what that is and there's kind of two two perspectives that I run into bear that you find people on one you have the people that are just lethargic and don't do anything so this is kind of their first entree into doing something hard professionally per any because mm -hmm. it's been easy enough and in america that's more and more common on the other hand you have people that have tapped out the utility of fitness where i think this is going to give me more than it is and i'm like wow look at all these things you're doing in the weight room and this and whether it be crossfit and this fitness yeah, and swimming yeah. i'm like this is that's as six pack as your abs are going to get and they keep thinking it's going to bring them to this point uh this connection point of joy like permanent joy and and when I'm talking to them, I talk a lot about like their buckets of wealth because I want to talk. You want to be wealthy. I talk about there's a fitness bucket, there's a relationship bucket, there is a financial bucket. There's these buckets, but the one thing that's not a bucket is your relationship with Christ, your spirituality. That is the actual platform all the buckets are on. So when you look at one thing, it's kind of an entry point. But the problem sometimes you get to is people get stuck there. Mm. Oh, uh, this was great so much. I'm getting these good feelings of empowerment and accountability. And I'm able to push myself. They never did that before. And they have all these stories to tell. And they think that that's just going to keep going. And I'm like, wrong. You're going to get over. It. And these things you get now if you're in your 20s, 30s, at some point they'll level off a little bit. You might get some gains or what have you. But this is just what it is. It's a tool. This is a body. You want to take great care of it. It's your temple, of course. However... You need to expand your view. This is a tool to build that muscle. We talked exactly. About yeah. yeah. Keep going. Keep going. I'm sorry. I'm just. Yeah. So, no, but when you find somebody in that place, you can use those same muscle building, that same type of intentionality they took to growing something. When I can go back to them, like, hey, remember when you were soft? Remember when you couldn't run a mile? Remember when you were afraid? I use fear a lot. Afraid to X, Y, and Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at you now. What do you think when I say that now? Oh, my gosh. No, that, 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 that. Great, great, great. So here we are again. You're a white belt again. In Amen. a different discipline. You're going back. And I always Wait, you, dude, like, dude, you, dude, you know what? Though, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but as please. I progressed in the martial arts, I found out that the black belts could take that same 
virtue that that that, that took and the understanding of self discipline and awareness to a business environment or to a family environment, right? So as you so, but the fit, going with fitness first g gives you. It's an outside-in sort of thing, and it gives you that that trajectory to do that next thing. And the other thing about the other thing is about you were talking about the bucket, the, the God bucket. You know, that's basically infinite. You know, G.K. Chesterton talk. G.K. Chesterton talks about the um, the cardinal virtues as being ones that are restrictive and disciplined. Like we got to go to the gym, we got to do this, can't eat that. And but he said, you know, the the, the thing about the the theological virtues. So, so the cardinal virtues: justice, prudence, self mastery, fortitude. The, going all the way back to Aristotle. Um, but the theological virtues that Paul added, faith, hope, and love, he said those you can run wild with. Why? Because God is an infinite being. And so you get platformed out. You know, I've won my world titles. Is that all there is, you know, in surfing? Um, uh, in martial arts, I've, I, you know, I've trained to get my black belts and, and, and been physically fit. And it's good to maintain and, 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 and keep that. But is that all there is? But when you get to God... You can never plumb the depth, you know, the, the discipline, but the discipline that it took to do, to go, grow in these other areas will bring you into a deeper walk with the Lord. Right behind me, I don't know if you see my books, it's the early church fathers, the writings of the early church. And I know you love the early church, and I bet one of the reasons you do is because of their ascetic quality of their life. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's the, I mean, you, you said great, great into, um, well, what makes us, if, if someone's listening to this and like, well, what makes me not go? Why do I struggle to move? I'm like, well, it's because your ego. What? Your ego is the, it's the great distance. Or, yeah, I hate to break this to everybody. <laughs> I don't yeah, have an ego. I built yeah. a room edition for it. It's over on the other side of the house. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, the de it's one of the devil's great <laughs> tools to stay hardwired in you at all times. It's the great yeah. distancer, which means I already know something, and other people are a threat to me. And, and what other people what? Other people what? Are a threat. Oh. They're a threat to me. So mm. I have to defend myself against them. So you're in this real spot where it's really hard to learn. Versus you talk about the theological virtues. Well, what is love? Well, when you think about falling in love, when you let go and you fall, mm. what is, I mean, I, do you feel pretty confident? Do you feel like, no. And if you're, you're, you're falling, like that's a sense that ego doesn't care for. And mm. ego wants to give you a small set of control. Mm. So when you think about the transition you just gave me, like that's one of the things that blocks people um, from growth because the ego tells me no. It says go back. One of my favorite quotes is um, from uh, John Archibald Wheeler. He was a physicist and contemporary of Einstein. And he said, as our island of knowledge grows, so too do the shores of our ignorance. Oh, and the ego, yeah. The ego wants you to, hey, no, look back at your island. You built that waterfall. Look at this big tower. You know, okay, now keep looking over here. And yeah. growth is happening looking at the shores all the way around and be like, wow, in the eternal I, yes. I, I'm, I'm nothing. And they're like, yeah. looking at it with a sense of gratitude, connection, confidence that yeah. I, as I dissolve into this greater thing, I am capable of doing greater things. I'm able to self-sacrifice. You, you can't self-sacrifice when you've got a rock hard grip on ego. You just can't do it. And fear. They go hand in 100%. hand. We're yeah, talking because with... it's a tool of it's a tool of uh, it's a tool of ego. I feel embarrassed I haven't inter introduced you in the last 10 minutes. We're talking to B.J. McKay, personal leadership trainer. When I met him at uh, the event I spoke at in Indiana, I go, I, I, I want to get to know this guy. So one of, the, one of the tricky ways I do that is say, be in my show. You know, then I can, have a, I can grab him for, a, for a, a, an hour and have a great, great conversation. We're talking with B.J. McKay. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up at the Bishop Markham Ranch in Goldendale, Washington. Fisher Man. The Columbia River Bar, where the mighty Columbia meets the massive Pacific, is no place for wimps to work. There are hundreds of sobering reasons. Over 200 shipwrecks and many more boats met their demise. As to why this boiling cauldron of water is rightly called the Graveyard of the Pacific, my great-grandfather, a stalwart, virtuous man and lay preacher, was one of the pioneering fishermen who came to Owaka, Washington, to strike a rich on salmon in the 1870s, a time when ships were made of wood and men of iron. My ancestors faced this very water in 30-foot sailboats, not unlike those on the Sea of Galilee. Give some understanding as to why Jesus chose commercial fishermen as four of the Twelve Apostles. 
Hardy souls, these men, men of perseverance, willing to take a risk to face death and then go at it again. As you may recall, Jesus called James and John the sons of thunder. Having worked on fishing boats, I know a little something about fishermen who thunder. Colorful, raw language, raw emotion, and the sheer force of will. Suffering persecution and the threat of death, those boys stood up for what was right, pushing through the storms of life. It's time for men of the church to heed the call to be men of virtue and perseverance for the sake of righteousness, ever pressing upstream with God's truth as a flow of culture pushes back against what is right, true, just, and good. Be a fisherman. Get on board and grab an oar. This is Dan Laboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite you to go to our YouTube channel, the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. You know, when you go there, we have all of the radio shows are videoed and, they, and, they're, and, we're, and they're, they're posted there on YouTube. All of our Bear Wozniak Adventure shows are there. I have a three year, about a two and a half years, I guess, of, of, of teaching where I go down to the ocean every morning and I'm basically at the ocean. Sometimes we're traveling to Israel, who knows where. But I do a 10 to 15 minute talk on the catechism and we went all the way through the entire catechism. That's there waiting for you. Uh, but there's another area there that I'm really excited about. My wife and I, Cindy, are going to start a new series called Adventures in Paradise. You know, because I have the long ride TV show, this macho guy on motorcycles, and and the men love it. But I know I, mo I know the women really love our ministry, too. In fact, they're the ones that bring the men to our ministry. But we thought we'd open up the doors a little bit with Cindy and I because we have so much fun. We snorkel, we surf, we spearfish, we sail. A lot of S's in there some, for some reason. But we want to invite you to come join us in our Adventures in Paradise. And while we're at it, uh, we'll be sharing uh, some, some thoughts that, that we have you know, about our walk in the Lord. So, we're, so those little segments will be starting to pop up here in the next little while. We're going to be um, going down to Tortola, to the BVIs. And we're going to get certified in bear boat sailing so we can uh, charter a boat. Maybe sometimes maybe some of you might want to go with us. And, uh, and we'll be sailing in the BVIs and filming there as well as here in Hawaii or wherever we go. So go to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. And, and you can do more than just subscribe. Now, you can become a member. And if you do, then you get uh, extra benefits and you help us out in our ministry. We're talking with uh, BJ McKay. He's a personal leadership I wouldn't say trainer. He's someone who develops, inspires, and challenges people to to their to their greatness. BJ, BJ you know, my father was one of that that first kind of generation. I would say, Dad, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, you were a motivational speaker, and he he didn't like that. He would reject that term. He said, No, I'm a I'm a professional speaker. But he went around the world, inspiring people to go to go bigger in their lives to to you know here he was a catholic deacon too but he would go and tell people god has a plan for your life you've got to and and he went through these different these different ways of helping them determine what the what 
those goals were based on the gifts God's given them and the desires, not the passions, the desires God's plans. Remember, passions are kind of a drivenness, but desires mean to look up to the sky. So that upward yearning, that draw that God, the drawing that God has put into your life. And, and then, you know what? Put together a blue notebook and set some goals and start moving. That's what Cindy and I are doing with this new, this new adventure we're on. When I get a blue notebook out, BJ, and I start writing, uh, I start putting things in that three-ring binder, and I start crystallizing what my goal is, and, and it, it just begins to happen. It just, I, I just automatically begin to develop that. So um, we've been talking with you about personal leadership. How do people define what it is God's calling them to in their life? What, it, what is their, their, um, you know, their unique purpose that God has for them? How do, how do they discern that and go forward? Um, I can give you a little novel, something novel <clears throat> that isn't like a platitude um, that you would, you would hear. <clears throat> I think that the biggest challenge that people run into of coming up with what is that charism? What is, what does God want? For well me? said. Yeah. Where should yeah. I put it is um, I'm, I'm, I'm living in this cacophony of noise. I'm, I'm busy. We're busier now than ever. I'm like, nah, it's the same 24 seven. It's always been, but it's this, story people tell themselves that I can't possibly have time. So what do I end up doing? I just work harder and harder at smaller and smaller things. And I fill my plate with smaller and smaller things till there's no room to think. It's anarchy. It's anarchy. Those smaller things are anarchy. Mm -hmm. And they sometimes they seem urgent, but they're not important. And we need to focus on the important. Oh yeah. And it's, I think that the, that the tyranny of the urgent, Yes, um, is is a is a wave that just the people are crashing under and under and under and they can't breathe, and the air that they need to breathe is that's God's breath into them. Like, hey, mm. I, I put you here for a purpose, and it wasn't just to pay your bills on time, to be at work on time all day. You know what I mean? To do right. these kind of task things. Like, what is it to be a good person? And you hit this list, and I'm like, man, I don't want that on my tombstone. That sounds lame. I don't want to be. Sound- I want. I don't want to be a nice guy. I want to be a good man. Right. And I love, I mean, some of your language really resonates with me. It's like, what are you? And I'm like, where are you dangerous? Mm. Oh, I don't like that word. I'm like, well, you better get cozy with it. Because where are the dangers for you? That's where the treasure is. Think about every myth and fairy tale. Where Who's got to go into the cave with the dragon? You do. Oh, can you come with me? Nope. You got to go. I could die in there. You could. But you're going to die out here anyway if you wait long enough. Like, what do you What do you want to do? So I think that, that my answer to that is how, how do when I'm coaching someone and working with someone to even like identify like what should, when I get this quote, what should my goal be? Or what should I want to do? I I'm, I kind of want to pause and be like, did you hear what you asked me? I'm like professionally average for a living. I'm like a professional amateur. Like I'm good coaching because I've been averaging about everything. And it took effort and like learning mm-hmm. why I, never, I didn't get gifted with a lot of things. So when someone, when I respond, it's usually bear like a lot of layers of question, but I think the thing that really drives people, and um, if they're of Catholic persuasion, I mean, how, how much have you been in front of uh, the Eucharist? How much have you been in pure silence? How long can you be in there? Well, I can't bear, I'm a guy, I've been, I hit my head, it's, just a, it's a bear full of monkeys, I can't just sit there. I'm like, yeah, just, uh, you're gonna need to go ahead and do that. And you have to listen to all of that going on. I'm like, just observe it. Keep trying. I keep getting drawn in. Great. We keep going. We got to keep going because that's God's message to you. It's not BJ's message to you. And you he, have to open up the space. He, he didn't make it easy, did he? To, 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 you know, there are times, of course, when the Lord just surprises us with joy, as, as I think it was C.S. Lewis wrote. But, but um, the Bible says that, that I, I am the rewarder of those who diligently seek me. And he and I, it was Pascal that says God hides Himself just enough so those who don't want to find Him won't, and mm-hmm. those that do want to find Him will. I got a question for the people out there. There's going to come a time when uh, when you're going to be asked a question, and you're going to say, "Jesus, it's me," and He's going to say, "I, I don't even know you. Who are you again? We introduce me. You know, go away from me. I don't even know who you are." If we don't spend time with Him, and part of this, part of this, um, this time of prayer with God Um, and right now I'm having a struggle personally getting that connection with the Lord and is is that is that my fault probably some of it but it's also the Lord just saying kind of playing hard to get a little bit you know spending time with the Lord doing I pray the liturgy of the hour I read the scriptures I love to read the catechism reading wonderful uh, 
books to me are Lectio Divina, when I read a, 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 a real wonderful book. But spending time with the Lord, because it, it may not be easy. Going to Eucharistic adoration may not be enjoyable or easy all the time. But when you, but pressing in, just the same thing you're learning when you go to the gym and doing what doesn't feel comfortable or doesn't work, eventually it works. And so I'm just going to challenge people. Jesus said, I'm the rewarder of those who diligently seek me. So be diligent. I, lo- I, I, I love the words that you said. Well, I forget exactly <laughs> what it was, but you said, you go, go in and pray. Well, yeah, I don't feel like, a, well, you got to do that. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You got to do that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think that's the, when I run into and I'm coaching men, the hardest thing for a lot of people that aspire, like they're already leaders, they're running companies, they're right. titans of relative industries and I'm coaching. It's not coaching them to get off the couch. Right. They're trying to optimize. They're not sick. <clears throat> they're already well and they're trying to gain fitness. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, some other levels. So the challenge that I often am bringing them is challenge of stillness, challenges of yeah. stillness, challenge of silence. And they're polymaths, yeah. much like you bear, where it's like, Hey, you got like a thousand ideas a day. Like, which one? Do you, which ones do you want to kill so you can pursue a few? It's right, a lot coming in. You got to do a lot that. Going out, it right? Comes different ways, but it's like, where's the, where is my desert? When Jesus retreated, uh, and then Jesus went up the mountain to pray, and then right. Jesus went away to pray. Just, and I just, I challenge myself with it too. I mean, I'm selling this Kool Aid bear. I should probably drink some myself here. You got to be. And you got to live what you're preaching. That's for sure, right? A hundred percent. And it's and it's that's the hardest thing. The hardest isn't how much heat can you expose yourself to. Well, you know what? I, I got to tell you. You know what I'm doing about my, my, my situation here because of the I'm just uh, because of the challenge that I have. Because I'm is there so much on my plate? You know what I'm doing? And it's like you said. There's so much I can do and not do. Our last season of Long Ride Home, we have filmed and it's going to be delivered to EWTN within uh, within. Um, a matter of weeks. It'll be airing this summer. That'll be our last season of Long Ride Home. Big, daunting effort. The next thing we do, the, the Adventures in Paradise, will be something that is is just as beautiful and maybe more impactful, but but wiser. It'll be an easier way. It'll be lighter to carry. I just finished my, my book. I'm working on the final edits of it now. When I'm done with that, I won't t- pick up another book for a few years. You know, so there are seasons in your life, uh, like I'm a CPA too, so it's corporate tax season right now as well. But um, there are seasons in your life, but part of it is you've got to make a decision. To, like you said, what are you going to kill off? What aren't you going to do? Because sometimes you have so much going on and so, so many gifts that there's so much you could do. You have to learn to say no. And as a surfer, we know what that means to be in the still point. When you drop into a wave and, and it begins to throw and you're inside the green room when you're in the barrel, when you're, when you're in the tube, you're invisible to the world. You're hidden in Christ. And, it, and, and I, I call that the still point because there's a point where you're not going out of the tube and you're not going deeper into the tube. The, the wall of the tube it stays the same and you can look outside and you can see the line you can see the line of the wave and it feels like you're standing still because you don't have a mm. sense that you're going forward but there's mighty power rushing all around you but you got but you, you stay the course and and move in the holy spirit and be still and know that i'm god we're talking with bj mckay someone i hope i get to spend a lot more time with he's a personal leadership uh, a consultant and developer and a fitness trainer we'll be right back with the bear wasnick adventure People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure 
possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station well you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha welcome to the bear wasnick adventure we're talking with our friend B bj mckay i want to remind everybody uh, to go to our website deepadventure.com there's a place there for the mama bears to join and there's a place there for the men to join the man cave and the School of Manliness. There's also a place where you can subscribe to our email, our newsletter. So if you want to see how handsome B.J. McKay is, you go in there and you subscribe and you get uh, the video version of this uh, sent to you, of our show sent to you every Saturday morning. And a lot of other really cool stuff uh, gets sent to you. Plus we have our Deep Adventure store with my books. Someday soon we'll get B.J.'s book up there as, as I know the Lord is inspiring him. And other really cool stuff. Like we got the best t-shirts in the world and, and uh, we've got other books there and we've got the best gear. So uh, go to our website and check it out and subscribe to our newsletter. You, you, once, you, once you do that, though, you're on the slippery slope of, of uh, finding so many other avenues and areas that you can participate in our ministry and our outreach. I also have to remind you, May 19th through the 21st in Cocoa Beach, Florida, the Man Cave Meetup. Uh, sons that are between 12 or 21, that age group, bring them with you. Go to deepadventure.com and sign up for the the. the uh, the May 19th to the 21st meetup in Cocoa Beach. And this isn't like just, it's a retreat. Yeah, I guess kind of it is. It's meant to be, have us go deeper with the Lord, but we're going to be doing a beach rodeo surfing. We're going to be doing a, a sand wedge a golfing contest on the beach. But we're going to be having cigars in the evenings. We're going to go deep and talk story. We'll be having mass. So, uh, man, come to the Man Cave meetup, May 19th to the 21st. Cocoa Beach, go to the website you and click on it. We have BJ McKay with us. BJ, what else is, is the Lord putting on your heart right now to talk about? I, I, I feel like there's a volcano about to explode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's so much. I mean, <clears throat> and a lot of the work that you do um, is really inspiring, Bear. When it comes to the um, the place I'm trying to aim more and more of my work, you talked about a few of my worlds already. Where one of the worlds is fitness. You know, I've been doing CrossFit. I was a Division One track coach for a period of time. I was a pole vaulter. You were Another a pole vaulter? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. That's gnarly. You know what? i got to tell you, my number one video at my website is Anyalika Bankstrom. 51,000 views of her and I tandem surfing. And when I come in, her dad's, hey, someone said, oh, I gotta, you got to take this girl tandem surfing. When I come in, I tell her that, hey, you know, both of your daughters are good athletes, but she can really, when she jumped, I almost could not, I had to stop her from jumping too high into the lifts. And you go, oh, yeah, she's a pole vaulter. She's, she was, I think, I don't know, if she was a world champion in one of her levels and, and, and jumped in the Olympics. But, dude, wow. what is that about pole vaulting? That's gnarly. Has you, have you ever had a pole, yeah. vault, pole break on you or anything like that? Or um, I have not. That's for people that are actually dynamic and athletic. I have oh, never run What do you mean about pole athletic. vaulting? That's, that, that's a – wow. So tell me about that before you get into this other volcanic – Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I found out the, the, the short or er version of the story is I found it my freshman year of high school. A lot of people now get the thing sooner. But um, I checked the box. Hey, let's do track. A bunch of football players went to do track. I checked this box. I mean, that sounds cool. I'm going to try that. I get there, there's, I mean, 30-some or more pole vaulters out there. It turns out some of the best football players on the team, best athletes are there. And I'm like, oh, well, here we go. And we have an indoor-outdoor facility. I grew up in Erie, Pennsylvania, um, was coached under Oh, yeah, Sanford. yeah, I spoke there at Father Richard's Amazing. church. Yeah, yeah. Father Larry is terrific. Yeah. And um, it didn't go to Cathedral Prep. Sorry, Father Larry. I went to McDowell, which is the, the suburb public school. Uh, but uh, got into it, and it turns out um, that was one of those things that was very terrible when I first started to the point where my coach actually thought, you know, you, you have a strong upper body. You, you, you want to think about throwing jab because it just wasn't coming along. And they, my team called me a drill you do early on. It's called just one arm. So you can slide through with one arm. And they called me captain one arm because it was the only thing I could actually do. Um, and uh, I, I missed the football. I, I was uh, didn't make the basketball team. I was moving down the roster in football. <laughs> and I'm, I told that coach, I told the coach, you probably can remember this. I'm like, hey, not only am I not, I'm, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to be the best you've ever had. And he probably was like, whatever. 
And at the end of the year, I tied the freshman record. Um, and then onward, I'd, I'd gone to nationals a few times. And then, um, well, wait a minute. I want to, I want to hear about how gnarly that is. So you went to the nationals. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go no, ahead. Go no. ahead. Finish that statement. <clears throat> no, I just, and I, I finished my career and like that was the lead in to probably one of the biggest failures of my life as well oh. as one of the greatest successes that would come later. And then now you got to tell us that. <laughs> okay. right, we we'll go. get back to what, yeah, how gnarly so it is to my, jump. My, uh, my, uh, junior year, uh, the, uh, the gentleman who was, uh, I, I came in second in almost every meet I went to my junior year. Because of and that I guy? Number, I was number two in the state. And I, I only won one meet all year because number one was at our school and he was a senior. And uh, then they kept going to the state meets. I'm like, this kind of stinks. But yeah, let's, right, let's do exactly. it. And then um, he broke every about every record um, throughout the state, all the invitational records, then at breaking the state record. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm just going to delete this guy from the record books next year. And uh, all the way up until uh, my senior year, all the way up until the state meet, I, I'd done that. I was able to break every, just about, I think, all but a couple invitational records throughout the state. And this is back in, like, 98. Really? Pennsylvania. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, and I was, a, I was a, it was a remarkable story because I was, uh, when you look at me as a physical specimen, I was too slow, I was too short, and I couldn't jump high. So apparently, like, that was very interesting. Oh, those are important out, uh qualifications i think right? yeah that wouldn't be who you point out but it was like i was just one of those people i'm upset i was obsessed i needed it I, I got bullied a little bit um i had i had some self-esteem issues so it was just like that was the thing i glommed on to got a chip on my shoulder later on it was the size of texas but it protected me it gave me something to be good at. well you know what when it, i got to this yeah, yeah go ahead go ahead well, no, it's like that was kind of like my success uprising. And I got to be athlete of the week on the news. You got to do all that cool thing here and there. But then when I got to the state meet, it was all but predestined. I was going to break the state record. I mean, everything was tapered up to doing that. Even the person who ended up, I'll, I'll give it give it away, ended up beating me. He said, hey, good luck today. Because they, they knew. I mean, I'm, they're not, you're not going to beat me. And yeah. uh, sure enough, I not only, I, 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 I choked. I completely lost. It was right there for me. And I took second. I took second um, at this, for the second year in the row at the state meet. And uh, I, I laid out there, and it, my, it was as if my life was over. as like whatever, a 17, 18-year-old high school kid. that I'm like, everything was built to this, and I couldn't do it. You know what, though? It's, it, it's, it's interesting, though, uh, what you said is, here you are, a guy, can't jump, uh, <laughs> everything against you to be able to do, to be a pole vaulter. But you were, su- but you wanted, you wanted it. You were willing. And I think there's so many people right now listening that, that, uh, in their walk with the Lord, in their service to the Lord, um, they think, "Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a theologian. I'm not, um, I'm not gifted in public speaking. Um, you know, all, all the reasons why I'm not holy enough. All the reasons why God wouldn't choose you. But God is the God of God chooses the willing. And then all these, all these, all the limitations that you have." Those help you grow in fortitude and humility, help you develop virtue, so that the area that God is calling you to, uh, in that area, then God, God can, uh, it, it, the the gifts that God's given you are are strengthened because of the virtues you developed in the areas where you're weak, and so that was a big humility thing. But you said you went on to the nationals. No, I, I'd, I'd gone to nationals a few times, and I was just basically good enough to look like somebody who didn't belong there. That's yeah, about as good as yeah, I did at Nationals. Yeah, yeah. But I went on to college at Ball State University. Um, I still live in that community right now. <clears throat> and I was able to pull ball there. I'm proud to be um, from Ball State, one of the greatest recruiting mistakes of the track and field <laughs> coaches that got there. But, but I, I got there, and it was like you usually get kids out of high school and they didn't have great pole vaulting coaches. So you thought, oh, they went this high in high school. They're gonna, we're going to really blossom there. My coach probably got almost all the juice you, out of You there. peaked. Well, you know why, though? Oh, yeah. he, but this is a good thing. Because you you gave everything you had, you developed all of that, and and you, like there's a certain level where you're just not going to be able to go beyond. But then you know, so this this kind of your dreams kind of blew up. But in the process, what was the new direction that that developed? Well, yeah, I, I mean, I went to college to be an athlete student, not a student athlete. Right. So I really didn't consider much beyond that. Like that was my thing. I was really good at it. Um, but one of the points that started coming on is in my faith, my faith started to grow and the same fundamentals, the boring skills, the thousands of reps at something that got exactly. me to the place I yeah. got pole vault, yeah. that showed up in the Liturgy of the Hours, which I know that you faithfully Yeah, so you love, the, you love the Liturgy of the Hour. Yeah, so wow, I brought me you, too. My, I've been yeah. doing that daily, haven't missed a day in 20 years, flew to Australia, New Zealand and did it twice because I didn't know what morning it was. <laughs> just in case I wanted to make sure I tagged the base. But it was, <laughs> it, it, it was the discipline that got me there that whatever potential I had, that discipline applied. So 
in my faith, wouldn't the same rules be true? Well, I'll pray mm-hmm. when I feel like, oh, I just have a personal like relationship with Jesus. I'm like, yeah, what do you do? That? What do you do with that? You put him on the like, shelf. What if you don't feel like, yeah, yeah you, you, you got to do your faith. I mean, the, you know, uh, the book of James talks about it over and over again. It's pretty radical, right? It, it is. And it's, it's most um, confronting when it's a spotlight on your own life. Mm-hmm. Where are you not doing that? And then you're complaining that you don't have this. I can't get that. And you're pointing to other people that have things that you want. Well, like, let's just study their story. Mm-hmm. What did they do? What did Bear do to be on the other side of this radio show to win the championships that you won to do the things that you did? Deliberate decisions, training, practice, your black belt, everything. It's the same stuff. Yeah. And the, the thing same that principles, people, right? The same thing if for pole vault. And I've coached uh, my local high school, my son now who's a, a little genetically gifted a little more than me. He's a, a 10th grader who's six foot two, 190 pounds. Not quite my stature, who's like at five nine, right over here. So he's doing it now too, but it's this, bo- it's the boring things. Well, no, mass yeah. is boring. Well, the literature is boring. It's the same thing all the time, Barry. I, I know what's coming next. And I'm like, right. you're, you're missing the point. Right. You're missing the point right. of the exercise. It's not a, uh, the, the church is not a fun house. It's not a rock and roll concert. That's not the intent isn't to pleasure you. The intent is to grow you so that you can experience joy and, to, and, and to, joy and to die of self. Like die of the fact that sometimes the fact it's not pleasurable, you don't want to pray today, good. Well, listen, listen, we're, we're out of time. So that sure. means we're going to have to have you back. <laughs> so much more to talk to, talk about. I, I mean, I've took all these th- things I've jotted out that I want to ask you. I wasn't able to as we, we were conversing. We've been talking with BJ McKay. How can people find you? Um, uh, one of the best places to find me if uh, when it comes to my leadership work is um, advisausa.com. Advise what? Slash advisa, A-D-V-I-S-A, like Visa, the credit card. Yeah. USA.com forward slash leadership dash talks. Leadership dash talks. Okay. That's where most of my podcast content is. And there's other ways to connect with me well, there. I'm on Twitter at, at BJ McKay as well. That's a good place to go, at, at BJ McKay. We're out of town. We're over our time. We've t- been talking to B- BJ McKay. Till next, till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.